What I want to talk about here is multiple regression. Multiple regression is trying to find a way to linearly explain the particular variable, in this case the amount charged, and this is the amount charged on credit cards, using more than one explanatory variable. So I want to explain credit card debt. What do I think explains credit card debt? Well, how about the size of the household? My particular idea being here that the larger the household, maybe the more they charge. And then income. Here the idea would be, if you have a lot of income, you probably run up some pretty good credit card debt. Okay, so that's the idea. Now, the way my data is organized turns out to make my life a little bit easier if I have my y variable, and again, in this case, my y variable here is the amount charged. I want my y variable to be at one end of the data, meaning that I don't want this column amount charged to be between any of my x's. Just turns out to make life easier. Now, this data is also set up so that each row or observation is for a particular household. For instance, let's say this is the uh, Smith household. Well, the Smith household here has an income of 54000 a household size of 3 and credit card, card debt of $4,016. Ouch. Anyway, that's what they have. So, um, first thing I might want to do when I'm thinking about uh, running this kind of regression to try to explain the amount charged on credit cards is to do a little bit the way of descriptive statistics. Yeah, I know. Stuff comes back to get you, doesn't it? Anyway, descriptive statistics. Oh, you probably want to take a quick peek at uh, things like uh, means and, and uh, standard deviations. But more important, really, is to take a look at correlation coefficients between each of your x's and your y. So let's take a look at the correlation coefficient between um, my amount charged, that's my y, and each of my x's. Now, you probably don't need to watch me do this, so I'll put this on pause. Okay, what I've shown here is that my correlation coefficients are actually quite high. Because remember, correlation coefficients have to be between negative 1 and 1. So, this is, uh, these are both quite high, so there's a pretty good strong correlation. They're both also positive, which suggests that there's a positive relationship, meaning that, uh, for this case, that uh, as income rises, debt's likely to rise. And as household size rises, income's likely to rise. Now, that's what I see by looking at this correlation coefficient. But talking about seeing, I probably ought to want to take a look at a scatter plot. Because scatter plots for each x on the y will, again, give us an idea if this relationship is there, if it's linear, what it looks like. So I want to go off and do some of those. And again, you know how to do that, so I'm not going to make you watch. All right, here are my um, scatter plots. Take a look at this one, debt and household size. Nicely linear, nicely upward sloping. Tells me what I thought I'd see in the first place, which is large households with six to eight members in the household probably have more credit card debt than small households who are down here. So that suggests that I'm upward sloping relationship, good tight relationship, I'm good. What about this debt and income? Actually, I have to admit, I expected this to be a little more upward sloping, because it looks like I've got an outlier right there, and everything else looks to be only mildly upward sloping, if anything. But I'll still go ahead and use this data. All right, so now I'm going to go run my regression itself. So let's go do that. All right, the way we do that is we go up to the data ribbon, which is already open, and go over to data analysis. Double click on regression and up pops our box. Now, we start by putting in the input range for y. That's what I'm trying to explain. I'm going to go ahead and include the label as well, because uh, Excel is very tidy about keeping the labels with things. Now, when it comes to finding the input range for the x's here, you need to keep them together and just go ahead and outline them like that. All right. Now, what's this other stuff here? Well, labels. I included the labels, so make sure that's checked. Confidence level, 95% is what we use most of the time, certainly most of the time in business applications. Now, what about output range? Well, that's just telling it where you're going to ask it to put the uh, output. Um, L7 might be a little far out there. Let's try E7 and see if that works. By the way, if uh, you're trying to put the output on top of the data, it will pop up with an error message and ask you if you really and truly want to do that. Because most of the time you don't want to put your output on top of 
your data, because you might lose the data. All right, this is what the results look like. Now I'm going to scroll over a little bit so we can see most of this. And here's what we have. Now, when it comes to regression output, the first thing you want to know is what is the actual regression estimate. Well, the aggression estimate can be read from the coefficients down here. Okay, it's going to be read from down there. I think I'll just go ahead and highlight that so we keep that in mind. Now, um, what is this? We are explaining debt. So debt is our y variable. We're explaining this debt with an intercept term, 1304.905. That's this first intercept term down here. Plus, and I say plus because this next coefficient on income is a positive coefficient. That's this right here. That's a positive coefficient. So I am going to go pick up that coefficient, 33.13301 times income plus now household size. Household size looks like it's 356.29. Now that is our estimated regression equation. Now I put this plus E on the outside even though your book uses a little hat over the top of the Y. That little hat says it's the estimated Y variable. I don't really have that easily in um, Excel to type, so I'm just going to put that E on the end. Ends up meaning the same thing. Just means that this is an estimated um, regression. Now, what does this regression estimate tell us? Well, what it tells us is kind of neat stuff. What it says is it has estimated that if you have an income level um, right here, if you have an income level go up by $1,000, that you could expect about $33 more in credit card debt. Because remember, income's in thousands. So if income goes up by one, we expect credit card debt to go up by the coefficient of 33.1. For household size, we expect that for every additional person in the household, credit card debt looks like it'll go up about $356.29. Okay, that works for me. One more person, you buy more stuff. Specifically, 356.29 dollars more stuff per person in the household for debt. So that's what this is. Now this uh, regression equation can be used for estimates. So if you have a household with a particular income level of say 50,000 and a household size of 2, yeah, I can actually get an estimate this way. Specifically this would be my estimate for this household with an income of 50,000, there's my 50,000. Remember, income's in thousands, so I have to take off the three zeros. Income of 50,000 and a household size of two. I can expect, on average, households that look like that will be carrying about $3,674 worth of debt. Now, if you're interested, there uh, is a way to make um, Excel and there is a way to uh, actually create a confidence interval about this estimate. You can go ahead and read that in the book. Now, what else is interesting here um, is primarily two things. One is determining if this is a good fit. In other words, is this a good regression? A good regression is one that does a lot of explaining of the why. In other words, do these two variables together, income and household size, explain very much why? Well, the way you look at that is by looking at the adjusted R squared. Now, the adjusted R squared is important here because it's adjusted for the number of different x variables. So, multiple regression, look at adjusted R squared. Single regression, you can go ahead and look at R squared. But you really want the adjusted R squared for the multiple regression. Now, is this good? Well, this particular uh, um, regression right here has an adjusted R squared of 0.818. That's about 82% of the Y variable or debt is explained by these two variables. That's really pretty good. So yes, I'd say this is a good fit. The next thing you want to take a look at is you want to take a look and see if the individual coefficients are statistically significant. By that I mean, could the coefficients be zero? Because if the coefficient down here on income or household size could be zero, that would imply that the coefficient being zero means that either variable could be zero. Let me make that more clear. For instance, 
if you are up here and looking at household size, if this coefficient, this thing that's reported as 356.29, could actually be zero. So if there's a null hypothesis that the coefficient is zero, and if you accept that null hypothesis, it suggests that any household size would have no effect on debt. Because anything times zero is zero, and if the coefficient could be zero, then the variable does not matter. So could the coefficients be zero? If the coefficients could be zero, then the variable might not matter. Now I say might because remember this is a statistical test. It's not proof in the, you know, God will come down from high and say this is the way it is kind of proof. It's simply that the this evidence suggests that the variable might not matter. So how do we do these tests? Well, there are a couple of ways. The one your book likes is to take a look at these p-values. Okay, these p-values down here are showing us um, whether the null hypothesis that the coefficient could be zero is tested. Now, these p-values are, what, 7.68 times 10 to the minus 11th and 3.12 times 10 to the minus 14th. These are incredibly small p-values. That means that we have very, very strong evidence that we can reject the null hypothesis. Remember, small p, reject the null. Well, these p-values are tiny. So we're going to reject the null for both of these variables. That means that income matters and household size matters. Okay? Now, these kinds of tests are only done for one variable at a time, but they're pretty, pretty strong evidence that both income and household size matters. Now, you could also have done this test using the t statistic. Because remember, this is the test statistic for t, and you compare that to the critical value of t. And the critical value for t is going to be something like around 1.96, a little bit larger, depending on you know, degrees of freedom. But take a look at these t statistics. They're huge. They're absolutely monster. So we are going to reject the null hypothesis that each coefficient is 0. And we do the test separately, by the way. We're going to reject each of them. And we're going to say that uh, income matters, uh, reject null, and we're going to say that household size matters. Okay, So we have tested our coefficients. We think both of them belong in there. We think the regression itself is a good fit. About 82% of the y variable is explained. And we have our estimated regression equation up here that can get us predictions. This is really all there is to multiple regression.